All right. Well, thank you for joining us today. My name is Brittany Neely. I am the assistant director for graduate programs and off-campus internships in the Career Center. Um, today, we've got Kathleen and Britt from the grad school here at Clemson. They're just going to give us, you know, an overview of um, the application process and how to, you know, get in and all those questions you might want to ask them. Um, they'll have some some time at the end to answer your questions. So I will throw it over to them and let them get started. Okay. Thank you. Brittany, for the invitation, I'm going to share my screen. I just have a couple of slides. Can everyone see and hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. So we wanted to talk to you today about considering Clemson University for a graduate school. If you're thinking about graduate education, you're probably looking at a variety of schools, and so we'd like to highlight some of the strengths that we feel the Clemson University graduate programs offer. As you know, we're a tier one research university and we offer more than 140 graduate programs. That includes masters, PhD programs, education specialist programs, and some certificate programs as well. Um, our graduate students consistently rate our Clemson faculty as excellent um, as a Clemson undergrad, I'm sure you, you feel the same way about your faculty, but our graduate students work very closely with their faculty, build good relationships, and um, find that the, their relationship with their faculty and their advisors is one of the strengths of our graduate programs. Um, and then we offer a growing, inclusive, and vibrant graduate student community. And we have students from all over the globe as well as all over from all over the country that study here. And a couple of things that we'd like to highlight about the graduate program here. Um, if you're interested in pursuing a PhD program, and I encourage you to consider that, you do not necessarily have to have a master's in order to obtain or earn a bachelor's, I mean, a, a PhD, a doctorate degree. There are lots of programs, a growing list of programs, and here is, here is a list that we have right now, but it's a growing list of programs that allow you to enter a PhD program with just a bachelor's. So usually we think of, oh, I need to get my bachelor's, then my master's, and then earn my PhD. You actually can go directly into a PhD program with a bachelor's for many programs. So if you are interested, you feel like that's a goal that you have for yourself, explore those options to, and find out if that program is one where a master's is first required or if you can if you can apply directly with your bachelor's and get a jump on that. Also Clemson offers Grad 360 which is a comprehensive professional development program for graduate students and postdocs. So it's a nice complement to the career services that our, our campus already offers which are fantastic. <laughs> um, um, I love learning about the, the, the services that our Career Center offers. Um, and we also offer, again, the Grad360, which is a nice complement, offers um, professional development for all of our graduate students, no matter where you're interested in going. So it might be industry, it might be um, becoming a professor, and, and also professional development as a graduate student. So there are, there are workshops on improving your writing skills, how to write, how to write and apply for grants. Um, how to write your thesis and your dissertation. So there's lots and lots of um, professional development opportunities specifically geared towards graduate students that we offer every semester. And if we have any veterans on the call with us today, one, happy Veterans Day, and two, we waive the application fee for all of our active duty military and veterans. So if you are a veteran or active duty military, um, thank you for your service, and we will leave the application fee for you. And then I did want to just generally touch on some of the highlights or the, the benefits of pursuing a graduate degree. So with a bachelor's degree, you have you are competitive in the job market. With a graduate degree, you're even more competitive. Right? You'll stand out from the competition when you go to apply for positions that you're interested in. With a graduate degree, you are more qualified and more likely to be considered for advancements, for promotions, for moving forward and, and moving up the ladder in your chosen career. And a graduate degree, which 
will will likely provide you with a higher salary, which is always nice, right? Who doesn't want to earn more money? <laughs> um, also, a graduate degree is a is a great gateway to a different career. So you might uh, find yourself one day down the road where you're um, in a career that you're just not happy with. It's just not a good fit for you. It's not a good fit for you anymore. It might have been the right thing for you at one time, but now you're ready to move in a different direction. And a graduate education, a graduate degree is a way to open up a new, a new door for a different career and go down a different path career-wise. And then one of my favorite things about graduate education is just the personal reward and satisfaction of being able to really do a deep dive into an area of study that you're really passionate about, that you love, that you want to grow in, um, and, and the personal benefit, the personal growth that you uh, re receive from pursuing a graduate degree and um, just you know, growing professionally, personally, um, academically is, is something that I love about being able to pursue a graduate degree. And if you're wondering, well, how am I gonna pay for a graduate degree? I'd love to earn a graduate degree, but I don't wanna take on more debt. Um, not always the case where that's where that you need to do that. There are some situations where you might not be able to get funding, but there are there are funding opportunities for graduate students, and these are well worth taking the time to explore and find out what's available. So the two main ways that graduate students fund their education are through assistantships and then fellowships. And assistantships are where the university will offer you a significantly reduced tuition rate in exchange for a certain, num some per certain number of hours of work per week, usually about 20, less than 28 hours per week, and you're also given um, a, a living stipend. It's a modest living stipend, um, not luxurious, but you can, you can live on it. And there's three different types of assistantships. We offer teaching assistantships where you would teach undergraduate courses or maybe work alongside work alongside um, faculty, doing their, helping them with their research, or the graduate assistant position, um, like Britt, who's here with us today. She works in our office administratively um, and helps us with recruitment, helps us with managing our emails, um, and a ton, really a ton of other things <laughs> that I don't have time to delineate. Um, but there, there are those types of positions all over campus, at the library, um, the Academic Success Center, opportunities like that. Um, so assistantships are a great way to help fund your academic, your graduate school um, program. Or there's fellowships. And fellowships are much like scholarships where it's just, uh, usually merit-based. Um, they fund your graduate school tuition and stipend. Um, there isn't work requirement connected to it and they're usually um, with outside agencies. So the National Science Foundation is a big one. Um, there's, there's lots of, of uh, fellowships that are available that you kind of have to do the research and see which ones are available for the field that you're interested in studying. And then apply for them. Um, and you can even apply for a lot of fellowships even after you're admitted to a graduate school. So just because you may start without funding, it doesn't mean that you have to continue without funding. And then I just wanted to highlight our bachelor's to graduate program. Actually, we have two pathways for Clemson undergraduate students to test the waters of graduate school. One is the bachelor's to graduate program, the other is the senior enrollment and graduate courses. So the bachelor's to graduate program is an opportunity for you to take up to 12 credits of graduate courses while you're an undergraduate student and then when you graduate, you would automatically be enrolled in the graduate program that you, that you were accepted into. So if you're a civil engineering student, you would start to take some graduate courses in civil engineering, and then you would either go on to the PhD or the master's program in civil engineering. To qualify, you need to have at least 90 credits and a 3.4 GPA. And some of the benefits that you, it reduces your time to earn your, your graduate degree. There's no application fee, no supporting materials, no standardized tests required, and you can use your, most, most of your scholarships can be used to help pay for those 12 credits or however many, you can take six, you can do three, but your scholarship, your undergraduate scholarships will likely cover 
um, those courses. So it's a, a good way to get a head start and to test the waters to see if graduate school is what you want to do when you graduate. And we, not all of our programs participate in the bachelor's to graduate program, but um, a good number do, and it's a growing list every day. And if there is a program that you're interested in pursuing this way and they're not on the list, um, let me know and we can reach out to that program and see um, if they'd be willing to participate. And then the other option is senior enrollment and graduate courses. This also, there's no fee to apply for this. You could take up to 12 credits of graduate courses while you're an undergraduate student and you can apply those 12 credits towards a future graduate degree. However, it does not lead to automatic admission into a graduate program, so you would still have to fill out the traditional application um, and be admitted into that program. And Clemson students are eligible for this if you have 90 or more credits and a 3.0 GPA or higher. So that's a little bit about graduate education at Clemson University. I'm going to stop sharing. And um, before we open it up for questions, I wanted to give Britt just a chance to talk about her experience as far as how did you decide that Clemson was the right fit for you? And are you happy with that decision? Yeah, thank you, Kathleen. Um, so I am a second year student in the counselor education master's program. Um, specializing in clinical mental health counseling. And um, when I was looking for programs, I really wanted to have one that was in person rather than online. Um, funny that now we're in a pandemic and everything's online. Um, and then I also wanted to make sure that it was accredited with the um, National Counseling Association because that's important for my particular field um, in order to become licensed. So in looking at programs, I came across Clemson's and um, it seemed like they had um, very interesting courses and everything like that. So um, really what kind of solidified my decision was when I went for my group interview and I got a chance to meet um, several of the professors as well as current students in the program. Um, and everyone that I met was so welcoming and really nice. Um, and they also seemed to be, you know, genuinely interested in all of the um, interviewees and um, they really just sold the program for me. So I think it goes back to what Kathleen was saying in the beginning about um, Clemson students saying that we do have really good graduate professors. Um, I've had really great experiences with all of my professors. Um, I feel like they really value each and every single one of us and they take um, extra time outside of class to help us with things. Um, and they're very dedicated. There's also a lot of um, research opportunities if that's, um, you know, something that you're interested in working in with on the side. Um, so that was another thing that was interesting to me. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy with my decision to come to Clemson for graduate school. Um, it's also helpful that I was able to receive an assistantship because then I didn't have to worry as much about student loans and that sort of thing. Um, so it is a lot of work balancing class and internship and my assistantship, but it's definitely worth it. So, and it's nice to be a part of the Clemson um, family as far as like working with um, faculty and staff members. So that's about it. I'm curious if any of you guys have questions um, for me about my experience or just in general, general questions about graduate school about at Clemson or applying. So we'll kind of just open it up for any questions you guys have. And you can feel free if you don't want to say your question, you can send it to us in the chat if that feels a little more comfortable. So I have a question. The um, Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can. Go ahead. Okay. Um, it said my audio wasn't working, but I guess it's wrong. Anyway, um, what's the difference between 
the first like program where you said you can enroll in graduate courses as a senior you said there's one where like you get automatically enrolled after you graduate and then there's one where you still have to fill out the application what's the difference between those and what's like the the pros and cons of both of those okay i can i can take that one yeah so the difference the bachelor's to grad is that um it it does automatically lead to if you're accepted into the bachelor's to grad program you've been accepted into a graduate program upon graduation and you get to start taking graduate courses while you're an undergrad up to 12 credits the senior enrollment allows you to start taking graduate courses, also 12 credits, but it doesn't lead to automatic admission. You would apply like everyone else applies. Um, the pros and cons, the, the pro, the definite pro of the bachelor's to grad is there isn't an additional application. There's no fee, no tests, all those, the supporting materials that you would need to provide for a traditional application are waived. That's the definite plus. <laughs> the plus of the senior enrollment is the GPA requirement isn't as high. So the GPA requirement for the bachelor's degree is 3.4. Senior enrollment is 3.0. Also senior enrollment, if a program really does not want to participate in the bachelor's to graduate program, but they'll let you start to take some courses, you might have an opportunity to take courses in an area that isn't participating in bachelor's to grad through senior enrollment. Um, both, both also would allow you to take those credits if you're not, I, I'm not 100% sure of this, but I feel certain that if you have not applied it to your bachelor's, you could take it to another school to apply to a, a, a graduate degree. At Clemson, it's a, you, there is some double counting. Um, you have to have 150 unique credits if you're pursuing a master's and uh, 180 if you're pursuing a PhD combined with your bachelor's and your graduate degree. So um, you can double count um, at Clemson, but if you were to bring, if you were to use them elsewhere, as long as you don't count them towards your bachelor's, they're credits that you've earned on a graduate level that could transfer somewhere else. Does that answer your question? Yeah, so the difference between like if you can get automatically enrolled without the application is just GPA. Like if your GPA is like above 3.5, you can get automatically enrolled. Yeah, 3.4 or higher, yeah. So so definitely the bachelor's degree is the, the better option, especially if you're definitely interested in pursuing a graduate degree. Okay. That was all, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I highly recommend it. It's a, it's a great option. Okay, so we have another question. Um, I think this question is for me. Did I do an accelerated program or did I get my undergraduate first? Yes, um, I got my undergraduate degree at Wofford College um, in Spartanburg, then took a couple years off and um, came back to get my master's. So um, at Clemson, you do have to have a bachelor's degree in order to start a master's or a PhD or a certification program. Um, does that answer the question? And I guess one thing to point out with that, um, I mentioned like I took a couple years off in between. Um, and that's something that I like to point out to students because sometimes it feels like when you're getting towards junior and senior year, like if you're gonna go to grad school, you have to do it immediately after finishing undergrad. And that's not necessarily true. Um, you know, sometimes you might need a few years to figure out what you really want to do, or um, maybe you need to get some more experience um or like kathleen mentioned sometimes it's because you want to make a career change later in life um so yeah just to remember that you can always come back for grad school um in that case you would have to pay the application fee um but you wouldn't have to worry about submitting official transcripts if you apply to clemson um 
And all right, so next question is from CJ asking for me to explain a little bit more about what I do in my assistantship. Um, yeah, so as Kathleen mentioned, my assistantship is a graduate assistantship. And so it's more on the administrative side of things rather than a research assistantship or a teaching assistantship. So basically I do whatever Kathleen needs me to do, um, <laughs> just like overall. But I manage, um, we have a general email for graduate admissions. So I manage all of those emails communicating with prospective students newly accepted students. Um, we have a separate email that we use out to, um, we use to send out other communications when we need like transcripts from people and that good stuff. Um, so I manage that as well. Um, I also help with some of the things in our system, the application system. And um, I also do presentations like this with Kathleen and I've been to um, a couple different schools in the area to talk to undergraduate students about admissions. Yeah, so there's, it's really specific to, with an assistantship, it will be very specific to the office or department that you would be working in as to kind of what it would entail and what you would be doing. Um, but like Kathleen said, it's typically between 20 to 28 hours a week. Um, I personally do 20 hours a week. Um, and then I also am in um, an internship for my program, which is 20 hours a week too. So it's definitely doable. You just have to make sure you're able to structure your schedule and keep up with your schedule. Thank you, that was a good question. Any other questions either to be submitted to the chat or um, that anybody has? I have a question. Um, Kathleen, when they do the undergrad to grad, um, if they have like Palmetto scholarships or life scholarships, do those cover those grad courses? Yes, the South Carolina scholarships do cover it. I believe that there is a restriction. So you would have to have some undergraduate courses mixed in. So you can't have a semester where you're taking you know, 12 grad or only graduate courses. I think then you get into some gray area or trouble with the scholarships, but if there's a mix, it will cover. Great. And if you have other scholarships, aside from those, it's worth looking into. Typically they cover it, but again, there might be some stipulations that need to be checked into. It's a good question. And do you know how many assistantships are offered, like what the percentage is of like programs that offer that or is that a number we have? Yeah, so roughly 40% of our graduate students are on assistantship. The priority does typically go to PhD students. That's not necessarily true of programs that only have a master's. Um, and each program is a little different. Online programs typically don't offer any assistantships. Um, some masters do, and then the graduate assistantship like Brit has, those are open to anyone and can be available again all, all over campus. Like um, Brittany, you mentioned career services has graduate assistance, the Gantt Multicultural Center. Um, in the graduate school, we usually have a tip typically a, a handful that we use. And um, if you're interested in a program that is not able to provide you with an assistantship, either a TA or the RA, the research assistantship, or even the, the, the general, the graduate assistantship, um, you know, think about the skills that you have. There's a lot of offices around campus who need people for administrative, tasks need people to help them with website um, content, website development, social media content. There's so many, you know, think about your skills that may be within the program that you're, the discipline that you're pursuing, but it might be something that you just love to do outside of that program that you can offer um, and highlight those, those kind of skills are needed all around campus. Yeah, that's a good point too. Like, 
think about what you're doing right now in undergrad that could be something you could continue to do. Um, like, for example, I worked in, or I had a scholarship with the admissions office at Wofford and I gave tours to people and did different admissions events um, in undergrad. So then the graduate school assistantship ended up being a really good fit for me because I already kind of knew the ropes a little bit at least um, and kind of had those customer service skills that um, the admissions office was looking for. So, and as far as finding positions that are open, it's really just a matter of putting yourself out there. So, you know, just finding different people's emails on the Clemson website from different offices or departments that you think you might want to work with um, and letting them know, hey, I've been accepted this, to this program. I'm interested in an assistantship. Please let me know if you have something available or if you know of another officer department that has something available. Um, and then it's also important to include your resume in those type of emails. So then the person can already go ahead and kind of look at your experience and your background and get a feel for if you will be a good fit for it. Are there any other questions for today? Are teaching assistants typically, like, is their plan after graduate school to, like, become a professor to, like, even people that are not planning to become a professor and, like, not planning to stay in academia, do they be teacher's assistants or? Yeah, that's a good question. I would say it's a mix. There's definitely some students who are TAs who want to pursue becoming professors, but not all of them. And there's, there are, well, you, you probably know, but there's lots of undergraduate courses that utilize graduate assistance. Um, it's a lot of the gen ed courses. So they, they don't, it's not a requirement that the student who's a TA is planning on becoming a professor. So you can use like being a TA to like fund your graduate school, even if you're not planning to do that after. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. In fact, um, one of our, our previous graduate assistants, he, he was not planning. He, he went to a communications program. He was not planning to become a professor, but he did get a TA. He was our grad assistant, but he was also able to, to teach a little bit, one course. So he was able to, to double up a little bit um, and have 28 credits, 20 with us, eight with the, the teaching responsibilities. And he loved it and decided he didn't want to become a professor and pursue that. We ended up pursuing a PhD as well. So um, it could open up the door to a passion you didn't know you had, but no, it's not, not a requirement by any means. All right, well, any other last minute questions for today? All right, well, it looks like um, Britt popped uh, her email in there. If you guys have any questions later on, feel free to reach out to the, the grad school. And I just wanted to thank Kathleen and Britt for joining us today. Um, and if you guys are um, considering grad school and you're already in that process tomorrow, we do have another, um, another workshop. It'll be our last workshop in the grad school prep series. It's how to be a strong applicant. So we'll talk about um, you know, researching programs and how to be competitive um, and also some tips on tailoring your resume and your personal statement. So go to our website if you'd like to sign up for that. But thanks again to our speakers and um, we'll go ahead and let you guys go. Okay. Looks